Well, when, when I first moved to town with my family, we went to the Rialto and saw Howell's Moving Castle, which was just an enchanting picture. And when I got inside the Rialto, I was like, wow, it's an enchanted place. So um, it was a fantastic film, and it's one of only a couple I managed to see there before it shut down. I think it was just, uh, you know, I've read a little bit about the, the Rialto and the, and the history, and it, and it was just such a central uh, part of, of this city's development, and it just seems uh, a shame not to continue that uh, moving forward and, and uh, to expand it into uh, ways that could really benefit the community. It's, all, it's just so nice to have a central landmark, I guess, uh, to uh, gather and to, uh, to have celebrations. And, uh, I just think the Rialto is a magnificent uh, uh, landmark that needs to be saved. The Rialto has been my neighborhood theater ever since I was a kid. Uh, I grew up in Eagle Rock, but uh, the, uh, the, the romance and, and the architecture of the Rialto has always been uh, just my favorite. And then when it came about 1985, um, I decided to, I, I've, I've always been into old theaters. About 1985, I, got, uh, I formed the Friends of the Rialto and we put on a 60th anniversary uh, show to celebrate the opening day. Uh, we, we repainted the lobby to, uh, to, to bring back the original murals that, that had been painted over. Uh, we, we did research, we scraped paint to get to the original colors because the only photograph I had was black and white. So we did all this research, we repainted the lobby uh, with landmark theater's support. Uh, it was myself and the managers at the time that were very active. So, so for the 60th anniversary uh, gala event, we had everything. We had Klieg lights out in the street, we had uh, movie stars, we had old-fashioned cars, they closed off the street, and we had hundreds and hundreds of people there. The Rialto, I think, has the potential to be as vibrant as the Egyptian theater, which is in my hometown of DeKalb, Illinois. I don't know how long ago my piano teacher, Barbara Kummerfeld, started leading the fight to save the Egyptian theater, but she got a group of citizens together and she didn't do it by herself. They banded together and they saved that old vaudeville theater, which is where I had my first job, by the way, for $1.10 an hour selling tickets to B-movies, um, and where there were mice and rats, but there were also old vaudeville props backstage. It was a gorgeous old place, and now it's a gorgeous new place, and it's still as viable as it ever was, and I think the Rialto can be that too. And I was really intrigued a couple days ago in the LA Times, there was an article about the restoration effort for the palace on Broadway in the historic core in Los Angeles. That theater was saved from the wrecking ball in 1982, and uh, over a million dollars was spent on restoring it. It was done as a labor of love by a family who came uh, to America penniless, and they've now restored four historic theaters. So all these things get my imagination spinning about what can be done with the Rialto. And even today, when people from out of town ask me that how to get to the South Pasadena Public Library, even if they don't know where South Pasadena is, I ask them to go down to Fair Oaks and make a ride at the Rialto. And as soon as I say Rialto, they say, oh yeah, I know where it is, I know where it is. And you can see, and everybody knows what's happened to the Rialto now, but uh, hearing stories about the palace just uh, give hope to what could happen here that uh, maybe the Rialto could be restored to its former glory, maybe by its centennial year. I think that going to, you know, that being the first theater that I ever went to, uh, really uh, probably made me love theaters of that vintage in a way that somebody who's, you know, their first theater was, you know, a multiplex, just doesn't have anywhere near the nostalgia, I think, for it because 
the buildings from that era, you know, each theater has its own theme, you know, and the level of craftsmanship that went into the place. So you go to different theaters that d different towns have, and um, it's it's unique. It's not, you know, that it's going to be the same multiplex from town to town, the same architects or whatever. They're, they're, it's it's very unique. So you go into the Rialto, and it's the Rialto, and and. Uh, uh, so like when you see a movie like Robert Altman's The Player, and you go, oh, that's a Rialto, that's a Rialto. <laughs> or I was just re I was just catching up on um, some Mad Men, and you know saw that they had, had filmed at the parking lot at the back of B and H. You could see the back, the huge back of the Rialto, and it's the back of the Rialto, but I know it's the back of the Rialto, you know, um, because I'm just very familiar with that building. Um, and I'm, I must not be the only one in my family who feels this way because my, my brother Brennan is a musician as well and uh, he, on uh, one of his uh, albums, did a bit, which I'm trying to remember the exact, it's an instrumental bit, but it's, uh, it's something like, you know, uh, intermission at the Rialto or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> he did this song called that and it was to recreate for him the feeling of what it was like, the kind of music that they used to play at the Rialto while we were waiting for the, you know, show to start. So my favorite thing was they had a Rialto discount card that they were selling and they would show this little short and they took a scene from It's a Wonderful Life where Jimmy Stewart comes in and he's got this big basket of money and he's throwing the money in the, in the air and he's going, Mary, look at all the money I saved with my Rialto discount card. And it was, it was really a fun little thing. Okay, well, some of these pictures are, are actually Old pictures that, that, that I purchased. Um, here's, the, here's the fly gallery. This is the actual, the working fly gallery of the Rialto. And uh, some people say that there's, that the ghost is sitting in the chair there. <laughs> Well, I, there's a number of things that it could become. What would I like? You know, I'd like to be able to walk to the uh, movies from my house. Wouldn't it be great if there was a neighborhood theater again in South Pasadena? Uh, in terms of what the, the, the Rialto could become, you know, it'd be great if there could be uh, movies, film festivals. I think I'd also enjoy live concerts or maybe even a distinguished speaker series or, uh, hey, community events could, could be there. And uh, I think if it were a vibrant, Center for the Arts, uh, there'd be a lot of different uses for it. Well, obviously I have thought about the future of the Rialto for a long time. Uh, to me, I want it to be a living place. Living meaning it's got people in there, it's being used. Uh, it needs to be a theater, in my opinion, whether that's a live theater, uh, doing rep, doing, doing traveling shows. Uh, whether it's, it's a rental venue uh, and you have outside production companies coming in, or whether it's a movie theater. It's, it was built as both. It was built as a live venue and a, and a film venue. 
and, and I believe that it needs to be used as, as one or both of those. One of the things I'm, I've been a big fan of Prairie Home Companion, and I've always thought that the Rialto would be a great venue for some sort of a West Coast version of Prairie Home Companion, um, or that type of a show. And uh, when I started the Wine and Song series, uh, I, I was dreaming of the Rialto. Uh, we, I wanted to start it a little smaller, so we started it at Wine Styles uh, on Mission until they went out of business, and then we've moved it over to Firefly. But I'm, I'm just waiting for that moment when we can graduate to the Rialto.